Well, as you just heard, the last seven years have been the hottest uh, since temperatures began being measured. Uh, that's in around 1850. That is according to a new global climate data uh, report from the EU satellite system, the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Our climate editor Justin Rowland reports. Deadly floods heralded the new year in Brazil, and there have already been wildfires in the U.S. state of Colorado, as 2022 looks set to continue the trend of extreme weather we saw last year. These latest temperature figures confirm that Europe experienced its warmest summer on record, as well as devastating floods in Germany and Belgium in July. The data collected by European satellites shows 2021 was the fifth hottest year ever recorded. It also shows the concentration of warming gases in the atmosphere continuing to rise, with record levels of both carbon dioxide and methane. The new data uh, confirms that the, the world has been uh, warming. Uh, we do see uh, from year to year... Uh, some years are warmer, some years are cooler, uh, but overall they're getting warmer. And alongside that, the buildup of the two important greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide and methane, uh, has continued. What has been really striking, say experts, are the weather extremes the world experienced in 2021. The exceptional heat in Canada and in the US, for example. On the west side and the direction of travel is impossible to ignore. Today's figures show the last seven years have been the hottest years ever recorded. And the bad news is a temporary cooling event in the Pacific Ocean actually lowered global temperatures very marginally last year. That will soon pass, so don't expect any let up in the warming trend in the years to come. It is, said one senior climate scientist today, yet another warning of the damage we're doing to our planetary home. Justin Rowlatt, BBC News. Well, joining us now is Professor Liz Bentley, who is the chief executive of the Royal Meteorological Society. A good afternoon to you, Professor Bentley. So the last seven years have been the hottest since the mid-19th century, since we were measuring these things, and last year was the fifth warmest year globally. I suspect that rather miserably this will be of no surprise to you. Yeah, that's right. I mean, uh, you know, we've seen over recent years uh, record-breaking heat events, heat wave events, wildfires, flooding events, and those temperature records just keep creeping up and up. And as you say, last year was the fifth warmest on record, and that was during a year when we had what we call a La Nina event, a cooling event that takes place in the Pacific, which tends to suppress global average temperatures. So even in a, a year with that particular cooling event happening, we still saw our fifth warmest year on record. And the other thing that has characterised last year very vividly in people's memories is the extreme weather events that we saw. We saw them in Europe, of extreme flooding, uh, but fires too. That's right. Record-breaking summer uh, for Europe. We saw this, the flooding events that affected Germany and Belgium, for example, in early part of the summer. And the heat events, record-breaking heat across Europe as well, leading to wildfires across many countries across Europe. So we're seeing these extreme weather events happening on a much more frequent basis right around the world. So this data has been released by the European Union's uh, climate change service called Copernicus. How important is this type of data to countries in terms of their efforts to mitigate climate change? It's really important that we capture this climate data, really to, to get a, a good picture of how those trends are changing, to understand not only the changes in temperature and, and rainfall amounts, but also the greenhouse gas emissions that we're putting into the atmosphere, things like carbon dioxide and methane. And again, this report highlights that both of those greenhouse gases are continuing to increase and the need to, to, to book that trend, to, to start reducing the greenhouse gases that we emit into the atmosphere. And so that's that's about mitigation of climate change. That's thinking about how we can make changes to our lifestyle, to businesses, to governments actually you know, implementing changes so we can reduce greenhouse gas emissions. But we also need to think, as we already said, extreme weather events are already happening. So we need to learn to adapt to our changing climate as well. So there are long-term measures and short-term measures. 
Yeah, that's right. Absolutely. And and action needs to take take place now in order to reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. That can be driven by governments. And we, we saw the COP26 conference in Glasgow at the end of last year. And there are definite signs that governments want to move in that direction, maybe not quick enough that we'd like to see from uh, the climate data that we're, we've already seen uh, and hence in this report as well. But there's action we can take as individuals. And I think that's really important. It sometimes feels when we've got complex, big problems like this, that there's very little we can do as individuals, but we do have a choice. We can have, you know, make changes to our lifestyle to reduce our own greenhouse gas emissions, whether that's reducing the amount of meat and dairy that we eat, traveling less by flying or, you know, not taking the car as much and walking and cycling instead. Just thinking about some simple changes that, you know, help to reduce our own greenhouse gas emissions. OK, thank you very much indeed. That's Professor Liz Bentley from the Royal Meteorological Society. Thank you so much. The Prime Minister Boris Johnson says that he welcomes a decision by Virgin Mobile O2.